Hey guys, Jared Lopes here from the Dad Tired Podcast, where we are helping men lead their family well. Hey, I want to give you guys a couple of announcements. I know normally when you hear the word announcements, you typically check out and start checking your Instagram or Facebook. Speaking of Instagram and Facebook, uh, come join me. (laughs) That wasn't part of the announcement, but uh, Dad Tired. Just search Dad Tired in either of those platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, we'd love to hang, hang out with you there. Uh, but a couple announcements for you. The first is we're starting our new season of the Dad Tired Podcast on October 1st. So if you've been hanging out uh, or joining us all summer, you know I'm just replaying episodes from the past, kind of digging deep into the archives, some of my favorite episodes from years past. Um, and that's what today will be another one of my favorite episodes from a few years ago. Um, but we'll start a new season of the Dad Tired Podcast on October 1st. So make sure to mark your calendars for that. Secondly, huge announcement here. Uh, if you follow me, uh, anywhere on the internet, you know that we're doing a cruise in 2020, March of 2020. It's going to be amazing. We only have 150 couple spots for that, uh, spots for couples, and then 75 rooms for families. So, um, and most of those <laughs> are already starting to get booked up. So, registration is open for that. You can go to dadtired.com forward slash cruise. It's going to be amazing. We're going to leave from Florida, go to uh, Mexico. We're going to spend some time on the boat talking about what it looks like to be engaged. We're basically going to do kind of a mini version of a conference, uh, but it will include both the husbands and the wives. It's going to be really, really, really good. Uh, And plus we'll hang out and like have karaoke contests and uh, play mini golf. And uh, if you drink pina coladas maybe have one of those or virgin depending on your denomination (laughs) um but anyway it'll be a good time so come hang out with us uh on that you can go again please go sign up now because spots are limited it's only a hundred dollar deposit per person um and then you can pay off the rest over the next year so there's lots of time to save for that uh, and to make payments on it at no interest, go to dadtire.com forward slash cruise. Make sure to register like right now so that you don't miss out on that. Um, a lot of you guys don't know that I'm, I'm a speaker <laughs> and that uh, like one of the main ways that I support my family and to just continue to uh, operate and the gifts that God's given me is to equip the church and to speak. So if you if you're uh, men's, that, that's not, I feel like my voice just cracked on that like I was 13. Uh, if, if you're... Uh, if your church is doing a men's retreat or an event or some kind of conference, uh, or maybe you're a pastor and you're just looking for somebody to come in on a Sunday morning um, to help out, I would love to come join you and partner with you and what God's doing at your church. I'm, we're doing conferences, dad tire conferences, all over the country and world. We're going to Australia and Hawaii. I know that's like still in the States, Hawaii, but uh, Australia is, I think, our first international trip of 2019. But anyway, we're spending all of 2019 traveling the country and uh, talking about what Jesus is doing in Dad Tired and helping uh, equip men to lead their family well. So anyway, if you are a church, you're a pastor, you're a leader, or you know you're close with your pastor or whatever, and you're, and you're looking for somebody to just come in and help out with either your men's ministry or a conference or men's breakfast or Sunday morning or whatever, I'd love to come join you in that. Um, just shoot me an email at hello at dadtire.com, and we can talk about the details of that. Um, but I'd love to come out and meet you face-to-face. So if you uh, didn't know that, now you know. You can go to dadtire.com. You can click the speaking page there, or you can just go to hello or email me at hello at dadtire.com and we can set up some speaking details. And finally, uh, I've mentioned this before, but I want to encourage you guys again, if you if you haven't already subscribed to my friend Aaron's uh, new podcast, Marriage After God, it is one of my favorite podcasts out right now. It's so good. He just did a episode recently on what it's like to be part of a house church. Me and my wife are part of a house church. We've helped plant a house church. We've been part of the house church um, kind of model for several years now. Um, and Aaron just, he's also part of a house church and did an episode on, that's kind of a, for those of you who aren't really familiar with house churches, it's, it's kind of this like mysterious, like weird, are you guys doing your own thing? Do you have any accountability? Do you still teach the Bible? <laughs> like all this stuff. So if you're curious about that, they did a really good episode on that a couple of weeks ago. So I'd highly recommend pausing this podcast right now, going over there, subscribing, and then go back and listen to that episode because it's super good. Anyway, if you're not part of our Dad Tired group where uh, on Facebook where I'm giving all kinds of announcements and talking to guys there and meeting guys there, uh, go to dadtired.com, click the community tab. Anyway, I love you. I hope this help, this episode is helpful for you. I'm talking about what is 
does the gospel look like practically uh, in your life? Like, what? How do you actually not just say a prayer and wait to go to heaven, but what does it look like to have the gospel practically change the way that you parent and the way that you love your wife and the way that you love the people around you? So that's what this episode is about. I love you guys. I look forward to starting again in October. I'm leaving for Egypt, by the way, in three days. Um, so pray for me on that. Um, that I come home alive. <laughs> Uh, that's my prayer. Get in there, do what I need to do. I'm going for work, do what I need to do, uh, and come home without dying. That'd be fun. So anyway, love you guys. Talk to you soon. See you. Today, uh, I want to talk about, um, the gospel, which I know seems so like cliche, uh, for like a church, a uh, Christian podcast, not a church, we're not a church, but a Christian podcast. Uh, it seems cliche to say, I want to talk about the gospel. And before you like click the stop button, because you're like, ah, I've heard the gospel a thousand times and I know what that means. And uh, I would just encourage you to not, because I, I'm hoping that maybe something uh, said today uh, might be different or help you think differently about the gospel and what that means for your life today. Um, and that's kind of the key phrase there is what that means for our life today. I, I always tell people that when I was being raised, I, I grew up in a single family home. My dad uh, bailed on our family when I was three years old. Um, love him to death. I think he did his best of what he knew how to be dad, but I didn't grow up with a dad around. And uh, so my mom did her best to try to raise us. And... Um, I think so as, as part of like just trying to get some help as a mom, she decided to take us to church and, and try to figure out how to raise me and my sister. So I was the youngest of um, all my siblings. I have three older sisters and I was a little baby boy, but we, we, I started going to church when I was about seven years old. And um, at seven years old, um, I started to get introduced to Christianity. And one of the things that I was taught at a very early age was like the point of Christianity is... I don't know if anyone explicitly said this, but um, what I remember being taught, generally speaking, is that the point of being a Christian, of Christianity, is that we would say a prayer to accept Jesus into our heart, and if we accepted Him into our heart, we would get to go to heaven, um, which kind of gives us this um, security that if we were to die at any point, or when we die, uh, we will get to be with God forever in paradise. And, you know, if you're a kid, that, that's pretty, that's pretty like easy equation to figure out. Okay, if I die, there's two places for me to go, heaven or hell. And hell sounds terrible, fire and uh, misery. And heaven sounds like paradise. I remember thinking like I can swim underwater or I could fly for as long as I want. I was like, yeah, who wouldn't want to go to heaven? Uh, and so I prayed the prayer. I, I actually prayed the prayer, the Christian prayer, hundreds of times. Like, <laughs> I just wanted to be really, really sure that I was getting in. And so I remember, like, there was probably years of my life where every single night I was praying the prayer, except asking Jesus into my heart, because I really wanted to be sure that uh, He was going to, and He was going to let me in heaven one day. Um, but I think that kind of theology, I don't think, I know that kind of theology is actually super skewed. Jesus never talked about praying a prayer to accept Him into your life so that you can go to heaven. That was never the point of Christianity. Um, there are times where people make public declarations for God, um, and I think that's really important. Um, but the, the, this whole idea of like praying a prayer to get into heaven um, and kind of just wait to die so we can go spend eternity with God is not actually biblically correct theology. Um, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus was always talking about the kingdom is coming, which means like that's kind of where we get our idea of heaven, like the kingdom is coming. But one thing that he would talk about all the time is that the kingdom is at hand or the kingdom is near or the kingdom is in your midst. And so then you have to wonder like, okay, it doesn't sound like we're just going to heaven one day. It actually sounds like heaven is starting to invade here. Like heaven has a place and a role here on earth. And then we have to ask, like, what does that mean practically? What does it mean for heaven to invade earth? What does it mean um, for God to be part of our lives today? Because one thing that you could think about is if, if God was just about getting people to say a prayer so that we could go to heaven and spend eternity with Him, then you would have to ask the question, why would God not just zap us right to heaven and rescue us 
from this junk right when we said the prayer. Like if that was the point, if the whole point of Christianity was to say a prayer so we could go to heaven, why would God not just, when somebody said the prayer, relieve us from the brokenness of the world and kind of snatch us into heaven? But he has us continue with the rest of our lives. And I think uh, that's because God had a, has a purpose and a plan for what we're supposed to do to to be part of this movement of God's kingdom invading earth in the here and now. In fact, when Jesus was teaching his followers, the disciples how to pray, he said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God said that he wants his kingdom, he wants his will to come uh, on earth just as it is in heaven. Um, So, Bottom line is, I don't think God wanted us to simply say a prayer, um, but that he had something in mind for us when He to be Christians here on this earth. And, and we kind of say these things. We say, we get in this habit, uh, it's probably one of my biggest pet peeves in the, the Christian community. We just say things because we... Uh, we just say them because it's like it's it's become habit or like tradition or we we say things out of it just gets normal and we don't realize how weird it sounds or we don't even fully know what we're talking about and i think one of my biggest pet peeves slash fear for the people of god the church us guys is that we would um become christians and that would lead us to morality more than it would lead us to jesus um, that's a fear of mine that we would just kind of become a Christian because we equate Christianity with moralism and we think, okay, now I'm a Christian. I need to be a better person or a more moral person. And this is the point of my podcast today is that I think Jesus, I know, uh, Jesus, and I, I know in the scriptures, he was never trying to point us to behavior change, to behavior modification, to be more moral people, but he was All of scripture points to Jesus and Jesus's model for trying to teach us what it means to live as humans in this sinful and broken earth. And so all throughout scripture, there's this phrase, just as Christ. And if you catch anything from today's podcast, catch these three words, just as Christ, just as Christ. And I say this a lot. I say this in the Dad Tired podcast a lot. I say this on Dad everywhere, everywhere that Dad Tired exists, all the social media platforms. I always say, I always say something like this: We love our wives because Jesus loved us. That's that's not my own thoughts. Um, that comes through Scripture. Paul said to love your wife just as Jesus loved His church. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it's not just that's just one of many many analogies where writers in scripture would use the phrase, just as Christ. Um, And the whole, if, if you catch any point today, I can't emphasize this enough. It's that we would start to live our lives, not to be moral people, but that we would have deeply ingrained in our mind the phrase, just as Christ. Because that phrase, those three words, will shape everything you do as a husband, as a man, as a dad. So here's an example. I'm with my kids. Uh, my kids don't want to share thing, share things because they're five and three, and you know every five and three year old doesn't want to share. So I'm trying to teach my kids how to share. Well, how does the gospel make sense for my kids sharing? Like, how does the gospel play in to the to the here and now? How does the kingdom of heaven invade earth now? God's will be done now when my kids are playing and they don't want to share their stuff. Well, you know my son uh, doesn't want to give let his let his sister um, have whatever he's having. And so I tell him, son, we share everything. We share everything. As followers of Jesus, we share everything. Why, dad? Why? Why do we share everything? Thank you for asking, son. We share everything because Jesus shared everything with us. Which, you know, to a five-year-old, it's like, that doesn't, what do you mean by that? What is, that doesn't make sense. Why are you getting all churchy, you know? But the point is, uh, what I'm trying to teach my son early on is, son, we're not trying to be like moral people. We're not just trying to be like well-behaved people. We are shaped by the gospel. We are shaped by the person of Jesus Christ. And we share all of our stuff because Jesus shared all of his stuff with us. What do I mean by that? Well, in the very beginning of time, there was the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and they existed and they were not bored. Like they loved each other. There was an, there's 
uh, and this is a whole weird, like if you're a new Christian, like this is a re- this is a hard topic to explain. But essentially, you have one God manifesting himself in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all equal in their authority, all 100% God. And at that time, there's perfect community. And then they decide, let's create. Let's create humans. Let's create the earth. And they didn't do that because they were bored. Like God didn't create stuff because he was bored. He created to join in, to like let us know his goodness. And so what did God do? He shared He shared everything. Uh, He didn't have to. He didn't have to create humans. He didn't have to create an earth. He didn't have to uh, create stars and a galaxy, but he did. He he creates all of it, and he shares with us. He says, the earth is yours. Like, you have dominion over it. Rule over it. Be fruitful and multiply. God is sharing. He's a sharing God. And so I want my kids to realize that God has a reputation of sharing his stuff. Like, And that's the very beginning of time. All throughout Scripture, we see God giving of himself self and of his stuff and of his goodness all the time. And so I teach my kids, we share just as God shared. Um, <clears throat> sacrifice. Why do we sacrifice? Son, we always sacrifice as a family. Like we want to give up of our time, of our money, of our stuff. Why, dad? Why would we give up all the stuff just as Christ? Jesus sacrificed for us. He, uh, the Bible says that he gave up the riches of heaven to come down to earth. Like Jesus was perfectly fine. He didn't have to come down here uh, and, and sacrifice his life for us. But just as Christ gave up his life for us, we give up our life um, for the people around us. And uh, I could go on and on on this. Uh, give of our time. Why do we pursue? Why do I continue to pursue my wife? I continue to pursue my wife just as Christ pursued me. Uh, Why do I accept people? Well, I was broken and messy and jacked up and Jesus pursued me relentlessly. Why do I not give up on relationships? Why do I not give up on people who are messed up and jacked up and broken? Well, because God didn't give up on me when I was messed up, jacked up and broken. Like God continued to pursue me and accept me in all of my brokenness while I was still yet sinning. Christ came and died for me. So why do I accept people? Just as Christ accepted me. One thing I said today um, in on, on the, one of the pictures I posted was, um, amazing grace isn't amazing until you realize how jacked up and broken you are. And, uh, you know, this... This is a this is I don't want to go on a side tangent here, but if you're having a hard time um, forgiving and if you're if you're having a hard time showing grace and patience, I don't want to minimize like the way that somebody has hurt you because um, people are vicious. Like uh, this is a it's a jacked up world. I've been deeply hurt. Like my soul has been deeply hurt. I've had a hard time forgiving many people in many ways. I've hurt many people in many ways, um, but. The root of that, like the core of my unforgiveness is believing that somehow I'm a little bit more self-righteous than the person that's hurting me, or somehow I'm a little bit better than the person that I'm frustrated at or being impatient at or who I, doesn't, who I think doesn't deserve my mercy or my grace. That um, difficulty comes out of a sense of self-righteousness. If only you could be like me, if only you could be as good as what I'm doing, if only you could uh, treat people the way I treat people, if only you could be as fast at this, then I wouldn't be so impatient, or whatever it is, all of that comes from a deep sense of self-righteousness, that I have something over you that you don't have, and I'm mad at you. Um, And so to be connected to like forgiveness, and to grace, and to patience, and mercy, we have to be deeply connected to what Jesus has done for us. That's why I said uh, amazing grace is only amazing when you realize how broken you are. Like when I sit here and I think about how sinful and jacked up and wretched my sin is, like how my thoughts are twisted. Like I'm a jacked up dude and you're jacked up dude. Like we're, we are messed up, broken, messy people. And, and if we start to get away from how like wretched we are in our humanness and in our flesh, um, we will start to lose sight of how amazing grace is. 
But when I'm connected to that, when I'm like realizing, oh man, I'm broken. And instead of God bailing on me, he pursued me. He called me chosen. He called me son. He said that he's delighted in me. He said that he's proud of me. He said that Jesus sits at the right hand of the father constantly talking about how good uh, I am, how righteous I am. That's not based on my good works, but only by the grace of Jesus. Then I'm like, man, okay. Yeah, I can probably put up with somebody else's crap today. Uh, I can probably be more patient with my kids today, with my wife today. I can continue to pursue my wife in ways that my flesh wouldn't allow me to do because I'm deeply connected with the fact that God has pursued me and my brokenness and my righteousness, not because I looked good. Listen, God didn't save you because you were like the star player. Like God wasn't recruiting Kobe's. Uh, and Stephen Curry's, even though Steph sucked in the NBA Finals, like God wasn't recruiting the best because he wanted like to build this best team and get top talent. God was recruiting the broken, jacked up nobodies. Um, so don't get like this chip on your shoulder that you think uh, you deserved it or God somehow needed you. Like He needed your money and He needed your talent so that He could get something in the church or like grow his kingdom. Dude, God doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need any of us. We will die and the story of God will move on. Just like we're going to die, we'll have a funeral, the story of God goes on and it's going to continue to be about him generation after generation after generation after generation. The, the main character of the story will continue to be God and God alone, not us. Um, so we cannot get this chip on our shoulder like somehow we were worth saving. We were wretched and broken, and God decided to save us in our brokenness. And when we're connected to that, we start to realize, man, uh, this is amazing grace. That that God, the God of the universe, would look down on me and he would say he loves me and that he's called me son and that he delights in me. And when I'm connected to that, I can start to love people like that just as Jesus loved me. This is why we cannot get caught up in cheesy sayings. Like, uh, that. this is why we can't get up and trying to live moral lives or like uh, these, like just try to be a better person or behave better. That is not the reason God saved you. The reason that God saved you is to reveal himself to you. The reason Jesus came to this earth is to tell you, I am God and I want to teach you how to live in the way that I design things to live and that all of your life would point back to me and in all of your life you would say, I do everything just as Jesus has done for me and he has done for his church. Why do I share because Jesus shared? Why do I sacrifice? Because Jesus sacrificed. Why do I give my time, my money, my stuff? Because Jesus gave up all he had to pursue humanity. Why do I pursue broken people? Why do I pursue my wife? Why do I pursue my kids? Why do I pursue friendships? Because God, Jesus pursued me. Why do I accept people? Because Jesus accepted me and my brokenness. Why do I forgive? Because Jesus forgave me. He continues to forgive me and my brokenness. Why do I fight for the oppressed? Because I was the one that needed help. I was the poor, wretched, homeless man. I was the one in my filth and brokenness. And God didn't just toss some money at me and say, man, I wish you the best of luck. Figure it out on earth. But God moved into my ghetto. God moved into my brokenness. God moved into the neighborhood. He gave up the luxury of heaven. He gave up like the the gated community. And he came down into the ghetto, my life, your life, humanity. And he gave his life to fix the problem. He didn't just toss money at it. He didn't just toss good thinking at it, but he gave up everything he had to pursue brokenness, to actually fix the problem. So why do I pursue, uh, why do I go hard after like people who are oppressed and broken and and not having just, being treated justly? Because that's what Jesus did for you and I, just as Christ just as Christ has loved us, just as Christ has pursued, uh, it's deeper, man, I'm getting all like preachy here and I don't mean to be, um, but it's deeper than say like, why do we take care of the poor? Well, because Jesus fed some people. Yes, he fed the, the, the hungry and he clothed the naked and he healed the blind. He did all of that. Absolutely. But don't forget you were the broken and blind and hungry. And, uh, and God pursued you. And so why do we do it? Why do we pursue people who are in need? 
because we were the ones in need. Uh, and so just as Christ did that for us, we do that for others. Uh, so brothers, if there's anything I can leave you with today, it would be uh, to memorize those three words, just as God, just as Christ, just as, as Jesus, however you want to say it. But remember, um, we do everything. We do everything as husbands and dads, as men, as disciples, because Jesus did it for us. And we point our kids back to Jesus um, all the time. I've got so many more thoughts running in my head, but I'm going to close out this podcast uh, and just continue to point you back to Jesus. Uh, and I, I pray that as you raise your kids and as you be a husband and as you uh, be a man of God, that you would go deeper than cheesy, pithy sayings, Um, but that you would pursue the person of Jesus Christ, that you would get to know him deeply and intimately. That's what I'm trying to do in Dad Tired is constantly point all of us back to the dominant personality, and that's Jesus, so that in everything we do, people would say, why do you do that? Why do you pursue them like that? Why do you love your wife like that? Why do you do this with your kids? Because just as Jesus did for us, I will do for my kids, for my family, for my friends, for the broken, for the world around me because I want to live under the reign and design of God the way that Jesus taught us to. He didn't just tell us to pray a prayer uh, so that we could get to heaven. He taught us how to live life in the here and now. And that's good news that God didn't give up on you. God didn't give up on us. But in our brokenness, He continued to pursue us. That is the gospel. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ in a nutshell, that we were broken and God didn't bail. He continued to pursue us. So may Christianity not to lead us to morality, but may it lead us uh, to Jesus. That's my word for you. Thank you for listening to this podcast. If you found it helpful, would you hit the subscribe button? Uh, It's always helpful if you leave reviews and rate it. Again, that's not so that I get a pat on the back. The reason that your ratings, your subscriptions, your reviews help the podcast uh, is because it continues to stay on the front of iTunes, which allows more people to be exposed to the gospel. And that's my heart, is that more and more people would be exposed to the good news of Jesus. Uh, So please, let's continue. All you have to do uh, to help that message continue to be heard is subscribe, rate, or review, or all three. Anyway, thanks for listening. Love you guys. Come join us on the Dad Tired Community. We will talk to you later. See you.